A lot of people like to think the modifications they're adding to their car makes it look more aggressive, but looking more aggressive and actually being more aggressive are two very different things. In today's video, we're foregoing form for the sake of function as we discuss the most intimidating car modifications. Drag radials slash drag wheels or bead locks. So I grouped all these together because more or less they're used together. So drag radials is just a generic term to refer to drag tires because radials in general can actually refer to a lot of tires. But just for the sake of this entry, I'm just going to call drag tires drag radials. So perhaps one of the things that a lot of people forget when building cars is that what's the point of adding all that power if you can't grip? I've seen cars at a 200 horsepower disadvantage actually gap other cars just because they could actually grip from the disc. Now, my favorite part about drag wheels and drag radials and so on and so forth is it's not often imitated by clout culture. Clout culture basically being the modern ongoing automotive trend of making cars look cool for the sake of getting likes on Instagram or TikTok, aka they don't actually care about what it does for the car. And there's a really good reason for this. A lot of non-car people and a lot of new car guys actually thinks this looks stupid because they're like, oh, why the heck would you have mismatched wheels? Even worse, why would you have one wheel in the back be the smaller one because people are used to the front one being smaller one or everything just being squared and they're used to all the wheels being the same design. The current clout culture for fitment is obviously slam cars, get big large diameter wheels, have little tire sidewall and so on and so forth. So this practically spits in the face of the current clout culture. So a lot of people who do this aren't doing it for clout. They actually have a car that needs it and can go fast. And even if you don't have a car that's super duper fast, even 500 and 700 horsepower cars cars can gain a lot by just being on drag radials when it comes to just launching them from a dig. Now the actual reason why these are small is because your rear brakes are obviously a lot smaller than your front brakes and when you're building a drag car you don't really need big brake kits because they usually will have a parachute or you don't even need that sometimes it's just a matter of your front brakes will do most of the braking so they can afford to downsize their rear wheel and fit a larger sidewall drag radial so for example Mickey Thompson's, Nitto's, especially with bead locks so a quick explanation of bead locks they're basically multi-piece wheels that are designed to deform the tire less under hard acceleration. The whole point of having smaller drag wheels is because you actually want larger sidewall when you're going fast in a straight line, which is very counterintuitive to track racing where you actually want less sidewall because you want more stiff, rigid metal material so your car can corner better. But again, we're not talking about that for this entry. Suffice to say, I'll explain it in another video for another time because it's not the point of this video. But what is the point of this video is that this indeed is a very intimidating mod. And if I see someone pull up next to me with drag radials or bead locks or drag wheels, I know they're not screwing around. I'm like, wow, this guy's packing a lot of power or they're very serious about racing. The next modification that's extremely intimidating are ducktails. And no, I'm not talking about Scrooge McDuck, although he does send shivers down my spine. Ducktail spoilers. Bonus points if they also have a parachute mounted to it. So I'm going to be real with you guys. Big wings never were that intimidating to me. And in all truth and honesty, big wings are kind of a meme at this point. Because again, for the sake of clout culture, they've definitely oversaturated the use of big wings and big wang gang to the point that whenever I see big wings on like slow cars, Cars. It's not like, a, oh, that car might secretly have horsepower. It usually doesn't have any horsepower. They just did it because of sad boy culture and they're like, and they like have a whole bunch of stupid words written on it. So it's something that people do so much for aesthetics these days. And even the people who do do it for actual performance, again, it's not for straight line speed, it's for cornering. It, they still don't really, it's just not intimidating, I guess. You know, it's cool looking for some people, but that's the thing. Ducktails, though, there's a reason why they intimidate me. This is a very purpose built spoiler. This is not something that people put on their car for looks. In fact, some people think they're hideous. So wicker bills and lip spoilers are something that people do for looks, right? I have a wicker bill on my Corvette and a lot of NASCARs will also use wicker bills. So basically wicker bills go more vertical than they do horizontal like a ducktail goes. That's the difference. A lip spoiler doesn't go either horizontal or vertical. It just follows the shape of the trunk. Similar to the drag radials and drag wheels entry, people who have ducktails, they usually have a goal or a mission, and especially in combination with another. If I see a car that has a huge ducktail on it and has drag radials, I'm like, this guy's got a thousand horsepower. And even if they don't, they still have a fast car because you'll actually grip, stick, and go. In short, what I'm trying to say, like a lot of non-car people or a lot of TikTokers or a lot of entry-level car guys, they think they make their car look more intimidating by putting a big wing on it. But on the street scene where you don't really need downforce, 
course very often. A big wing just ruins your gas mileage. Doesn't really help you corner because again, on the street scene, there's not tons of situations where you need to corner. If you actually track your car, sure, big wings matter. But the point I'm trying to say is like, a lot of beginners think adding a big wing intimidates people. You are so wrong because it's such a joke and meme to me at this point. I don't I don't look at a car with a big wing and goes, oh, he is a thousand horsepower. And even if they did, they actually create so much drag from it that they <laughs> that they can actually still lose to like 800 horsepower cars or even 750 horsepower cars, like in my case, just because they're making way too much downforce in a straight line. Nitrous E85 flex fuel or methanol kit. So I grouped all this together because at the core, they're all basically ways to make your car faster without outright changing like your actual engine. So yes, you do have to build your car a bit to do nitrous. Yes, you do have to get a new fuel system to sometimes run 85. This isn't a traditional power mod. Like when you think of a traditional power mod, you think of more of a permanent solution or more of something that's just like, like a Kohler intake, an intake manifold or rebuilding your engine or boring out things or porting your blower and so on and so forth. With this is more of like a fuel change. So E85 and meth kits. So methanol usually is really good at running your car colder, which means you can get greedy and push more power. E85 is just a great choice in general. Like E85 and flex fuel, a lot of people say is actually, it's like becoming one of the best ways to make cheap power, especially without boost. So a Miata on E85, I actually have a friend who has an ND Miata on E85. It basically makes almost as much horsepower as a boosted Miata, except it doesn't have the lag to deal with because it's all still engine. It also cools a little better and it was cheaper for him to build his fuel system to run 85 than it is to build the engine to handle a turbo nitrous of course is just the most dangerous of all these but it's still intimidating nonetheless because usually when someone has a nitrous setup on their car they know what they're doing and that's like some end game stuff right there where someone is such a blown engine that or they have extreme confidence in what they're capable of handling so all the other mods in this entry you can see it without opening the engine bay this one you do have to have them open the engine bay but whenever i see a car at a car meet with this it speaks volumes for itself because it shows someone who knows what they're doing like hey i run e85 for track or hey i run methanol for drag racing or hey i run nitrous for street racing and people with stuff like this when they show up at a meet and open their hood it is definitely way cooler way more intimidating than red glowy lights or angry drls and ooh, like you know it's really funny seeing tiktok culture think they know what makes people intimidated with an engine bay i don't care about your led lighting kit what i do care about is when i see a nitrous kit Another insanely intimidating modification are two-step systems and flames, actual proper flames, not those tacky pop crackle tunes. So flames in general have a very like, they fascinate humans, right? Because we're super primal and we're like, ooh, flame go burr. So I'm not gonna lie, I think flames are cool, especially when it's massive and not the tiny little pa -pa 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 -pa, like, you know, the little pop -a, pop -a, pop -a crackle ones. I'm talking about like the cars going up to peak RPM and doom, and then it's coming down from peak RPM and doom like actual proper flames. So like you're not just running rich or doing a stupid hot boy tune with like a laptop where you're screwing around of how your car's air fuel ratio, a proper tune or two step system where you're literally shooting like three foot flames on your downshifts or upshift or on your launch control. And that is just, that's such a hell yeah moment. That's insanely, insanely t intimidating. This is along the lines of nitrous and E85 and meth kind of in the sense that this is something where if you see someone do stuff like this they actually know what they're doing this isn't just some teenager messing around with an air fuel ratio this isn't just someone running rich and just doing little crackles this is a full-blown actually built tuned car so for example my car is down tuned by LS experts and my car on its downshifts and on its upshifts or on its launch control will now shoot massive flames and that's the coolest thing ever when you're approaching certain rpm points and you just have doom. like just it's just that's just awesome to me like you see it in video games all the time growing up but to have a car in real life do it or to see a car in real life do it it definitely gives huge intimidation points like wow that car is a serious build right there instead of just the little crackle crackle crackles it's a straight up just assert dominance Another insanely intimidating car mod. This is one that you actually have to be on the interior to see. So again, it's not something visible from the outside or even from the engine bay. And that's cars that have paddle shifters that shouldn't have them. <laughs> so this is a really, really weird entry because some of you guys are like, oh, manual forever. But like, there's something to be said when you see a 3000 horsepower Dodge Viper with a sequential paddle setup. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, and a lot of you guys need to suck up your pride. I don't care how good you think you are at driving a manual car. 
car. You are not going to keep a 3,000 horsepower Dodge Viper. Those cars already want to kill you with stock horsepower. Imagine how much more they want to kill you with 3,000 horsepower. You're not going to keep it under control or shift faster than a robot can. They far exceed human capability. That's why it's all the more terrifying when someone goes out of their way to retrofit an automatic shift system or a computer controlled clutch system for cars that are usually traditionally sold in manual only. Another good example of this is the Hoonicorn. The Hoonicorn, which is obviously Hoonigan's famous Mustang. That car, all-wheel drive, 1400 horsepower. That one is also controlled by a sequential manual system instead of a traditional clutch-based one because, again, that's a car that's way too fast to be humanly reactable in an efficient manner. And that is insanely intimidating. I actually find it impressive. I know people usually find manual cars more impressive than automatic, but in this specific case, if someone has like a 2500 horsepower or 3000 horsepower Viper that's now automatic, that is far more intimidating than a manual Viper to me because I'm like, holy crap, this thing flies. And finally, this last entry is going to surprise you guys, and that is actually the lack of exhaust noise. So as car enthusiasts, we like exhaust noise. I'm not gonna lie, I like some exhaust noise. I'm never gonna muff or delete, I'm never gonna straight pipe. So right now my current setup is I have a Helix mid pipe with crossovers, and I still have mufflers on. I don't have any cats and I do have headers, so my car is definitely somewhat loud, you know, but I, I'm not that loud according to Atlanta standards. I see moms and Range Rovers that make more noise than me, because everyone and their mom here literally straight pipes their cars. like. That's not even an anecdotal thing. They literally do it. But there's something to be said about cars that are silent, but deadly. It's even more terrifying if you hear a very subtle, like, bowing noise, like a little, just whoa, 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 like whine from a pro charger, or if they have, like, boost noises. You won't really hear that until the car gets moving, obviously, but that's why it's all the more scary. So obviously you have, like, stock cars. If someone is, like, just bone stock exhaust sound, that doesn't intimidate me. It's only intimidating when they literally make no noise. So when you first add a turbo to a car, it will add actually make it make less exhaust noise because it has to run through the turbo for the cost of it spooling. But like I said, you don't really hear the spooling until the car gets moving. So some of the most terrifying cars I've lined up against, like one of my favorite ones that sticks out to me was this V6 Mustang. And I'm in my Z06, right? And I still beat him on the dig because he only has 500 wheel, right? And I have like 700. That didn't change the fact that I was massively impressed by that car because I was like, had I been in like a Mustang GT or like any V, or like normal non-boosted V8, I would have gotten my butt whooped because this guy at the stop was pure silence. You just couldn't hear anything because it's just a V6 Mustang, right? He had this full stock system. He still had resonators, still does mufflers because I talked to him after. He did have a custom manifold though, but he did have high flow cats. Obviously the reason he has a custom manifold is to run into his turbo. Not gonna lie, when sitting at a stoplight, his car was completely silent. And I told him, I was like, how much fun do you have trolling people? And he's like, all the fun. And I can absolutely just see his eating grin and he deserves it because that's a unique build and there's definitely something to be said about car enthusiasts who do the opposite of what 99% of car enthusiasts do which is make our cars louder right and don't get me wrong you do get more horsepower by getting like an actual non-restrictive cat back system but these people they're willing to sacrifice like another thing I'll be honest about is your exhaust system like for example my full header to mid pipe like helix mid pipe to axle back my Corvette with the dyno tune I have other mods too but with the dyno tune all that entire exhaust setup from head or back is like 40 horsepower and like on cars that aren't even boosted you're maybe only gonna get like 15 or 23 horsepower for like a naturally aspirated v8 by the time you're talking about like v6 like in his case a v6 mustang it's like only 7 to 10 horsepower so he's willing to forego that like small 10 horsepower gain for the absolute silent but deadly perk of just making no noise but being boosted and just blowing people's doors off Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you guys had fun with some of these mods. I hope learning about some of these modifications make you guys have a different outlook on certain cars you may have seen. Now you may know that when cars have small wheels on the back, they may be something you don't want to mess with, and that cars that are super quiet may have more than meets the eye to them. If you enjoy cars and car content, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like this video to help it in the algorithm. Other than that, see y'all next time. Blade Angel out.